guys, it's uh, Sunday evening and I'm bored, dreading work the next day and uh, yeah I figured I'd post a, a video. Um, what I'm going to do is just pick out a few games kind of at random uh, that are either unique or that I think people might want to have a look at at some point. Um, so yeah, after you watch this video, if, if any of these games catch your eye and you want to see some footage, um, I'll happily post them uh, with the sort of means I've got at the moment which is a bog standard um, pre-installed laptop capture card uh, and it, it does the job but the, unfortunately it captures with a bit of lag so some games are nigh and impossible to get any decent footage of um, so what we'll do is we'll come down to this little cupboard here uh, this we keep actually it's where I keep all sorts of things to be honest uh, at the front you can see we've got all the PS1 games uh, the power ones there are some quality titles in there, they run all the way to the back but I'll try to start off with something more interesting um, and here we hit. I mean, this was pretty rare until recently. Uh, this is Sin and Punishment for the N64. It's basically let me just turn it off. Maybe I'll leave it on. It's basically an on-rail shooter, um, but it's absolutely spectacular. It's made by Treasure, if uh, memory serves me. Yeah, and it's just brilliant. It was only released in Japan right at the end of the N64's life cycle. Comes in a really sweet box as well. Um, this it's always been in high demand since it came out, and I think with there's sort of been a resurgence for retro gaming. Um, since I don't even know, like the beginning of the noughties, I guess, as they were called, and uh, this was a sort of a must have, really sought after title at that point. Uh, and it ended up on the Wii Virtual Console, which is really strange. And um, I imagine the success from that resulted in the making oops, a full blown sequel for the Wii, uh, Sin of Punishment 2, very original title. And to be honest with you, Sin of Punishment 2 is absolutely brilliant as well. But uh, let's just have a look at the inside here. Let's get her open. I can't remember how much I paid for this. Uh, I don't think it was anything too insane because, like I say, at the time, no one really cared. It was just uh, it was just a really good game that wasn't released in this country. I mean, look at that. Even the manual is just like massive and really nice. Uh, this I'm pretty sure it's brand new when I got it. Still got a lot of the inlays. There's a little warning there from Toad. What have we got here? Uh, another one. Again, I don't read Japanese. I know a little bit of uh, katakana and hiragana, but. Not enough to get me through any of this. Uh, man, see, I'm going to miss manuals when they stop making them, because look at things like that. Tell me that isn't kind of awesome. Just the control layout. That's really good. Uh, and even the manual, it's a full colour manual. With some really nice artwork in it as well. So that's really cool. Um, I'm not going to tidy this up on camera, I'll just put it aside for the time being. There she goes. Uh, what else do you have in here that's interesting? I think I showed this once before, and uh, I was going to show it and do like an extended look at it but the, the issue is I was nattering on or rambling on endlessly and I got everything wrong um, I'm going to try to get it right this time so you know them as Rockman and Mega Man and Bass and I think in Japan they're known as Rockman and Forte I think that's right um, yeah so this is basically Mega Man and Bass again similar to Sin Punishment this came out late-ish quite late in fact in the SNES's life cycle um, it's not Mega Man 9 evidently since they actually made that uh, it's a whole different game and um yeah, basically you get to play as base, that was the appeal of this. It's just more Mega Man, and it's really good. The way it starts off is fantastic. I think Proto Man gets sort of what you thought at the time was killed right in the opening, uh, and that just seems so cool if you're into the Mega Fan sort of mythology. Mega Fan? Mega Man? If you're a Mega Fan of the Mega Man mythology, you really enjoy it. Uh, so let's have a look at that one. Again, love the box here. Look how skinny that is. It's really unique. So let's bust this one open. Again, I don't remember what I paid for this. It's been so long. I really want to play it, though. Um, I didn't sink much time into it. Played probably more of the Game Boy Advance version, but this is actually better. And this might have been the video got cut off then. Never mind. Um, so yeah, I was talking about the uh, the Game Boy Advance version of this, which, as I said, I think has um, a smaller color palette. I'm not 100 percent sure, uh, but there was a reason, and it didn't look as good. Obviously, it was condensed down to the small screen. Uh, so the resolution was changed. It's not a direct port; they just squished it on. Anyhow, uh, again, wonderful artwork. Um, it's a really cool picture on the back there. And it's all in colour. Look at that. That's, oh, that's amazing. I think that's all the bosses. Uh, I need to try and get that the camera here. Uh, where are they? Yeah, there you go. So, not knowing the names of them, uh, I'm not going to go on too much here. But they look really, really cool. Just uh, another really wonderful uh, instruction manual. I do have a few Japanese games. Um, purposefully chosen the ones that aren't text heavy, as I don't read Japanese. They'll be very sensible. 